Greetings in the name of Christ. My name is Walter Meyer III, and we will be going over the Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent, and that is Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9, the well-known account of the bronze serpent. After going through the Hebrew and translating, I'll have a few thoughts with regard to interpretation. By way of translation, going to the Hebrew text, the first verb is the verb nasa, and that means to set out. And we see that this is a plural. It's an imperfect third masculine plural imperfect call from the verb nasa. It's also while consecutive. They set out, now literally, from Hor, the mountain. We could simply translate that as from Mount Hor. Next phrase, Derek Yam Suf. That could be understood as by way of, by the way of the Yam Suf. Uh, this Yam Suf, then, in this context, would be a reference to the Red Sea. That phrase, Yam Suf, can have different meanings, but in this context, the Red Sea. So we could translate this by way of the Red Sea, by the way of the Red Sea. And then going on, the verb savav, to go around, so this is an infinitive, the verb savav, to go around, and then next, the land of Edom. So, they set out from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And now the next portion, the verb katsar means to be short or to grow short. The subject follows nefesh ha'am. Uh, the soul of the people, the spirit of the people grew short or was short. And that is an idiomatic expression meaning that they were impatient or they were short-tempered. And so the translation and they became impatient on the way. So, Baderic on the way. Going on from there. The people, and then the well-known verb devar, the people spoke, Be'lohim, against God, u Moshe, and against Moses. So, here the preposition, ba, the bait. Uh, both times in this context has the sense against. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Now here's what they said. Lama. Why? The verb Allah. So this is ayin lamad hay. This is a hifil perfect. It is a second masculine plural. And this is the form for the second masculine plural perfect before the suffix new. And the translation would be, why did you bring us, the suffix us up? So the verb Allah means to go up, if you'll cause to go up. Or why did you bring us up? And this would be a reference then to Moses and perhaps also to Aaron and Miriam and also to Yahweh. Why did you bring us up, Mim Mitzrayim, from Egypt, Lamuth? So the verb muth, this is a call infinitive construct, to die, bamidbar, in the wilderness. Ki ein lechem, because there is no lechem, that could be bread or food, wa ein mayim, and there is no water, wa nafshinu katsa. So this would be our soul, and now the verb kutz. This would be a call perfect, a third feminine singular to go with nefesh, and our soul loathes. It uh, has a loath loathing against, and then lechem, against the bread, but that's modified by what follows, hakilokeil. And this is a hapox. This is the only time this occurs in the Hebrew Bible, and comparing it with similar words and also based on context, this would have the sense contemptible or worthless. And our soul loathes 
the contemptible bread, the worthless bread. And this, of course, now is a reference to the manna, which God has been providing for them. And this is their attitude toward it. Our soul loathes, has a loathing against the worthless bread. Next portion. The verb shalach to send, piel, Yahweh sent among the people, so Ba'am, among the people, and now what did Yahweh send? Marked by a fear, marker of the definite direct object, taking it one word at a time. Ha, ha, nechashim. Nechashim would be a reference to the serpents. And now modified by this next word, ha, seraphim, the fiery serpents. Now, this word seraphim, interestingly enough, is used also in Isaiah chapter 6, the call chapter, and Isaiah saw the seraphim, uh, heavenly beings, the angels. So this is just an example of where context is so important for understanding a word. Here's seraphim modifying serpents, uh, the fiery serpents. Next, the verb nashak, and they bit. And now the people, marked by F, marker of the definite direct object, the people. And then we have the verb muth, to die. The subject follows am rab. So people, and then rab would be many people. So many people died. Uh, this verb is a singular. It's a call perfect. It's a third masculine singular because am technically is singular. I know in our minds we think of a plurality, but Hebrew here is following the grammatical rule of matching. The verb matches the subject. And then finally, me Yisrael of Israel. So let me just repeat this verse. Yahweh sent among the people the fiery serpents, and they bit the people, and Many people of Israel died. Okay, next verse. The people came. Uh, yavo, why yavo? And so the verb bo, the people came to Moses and they said, Hatanu, we have sinned. Ki, because Debarnu, we spoke, Vayahweh Wavak against Yahweh and against you. Hithpalel, so the verb palal, this is now a hithpalel imperative. Pray El Yahweh, to Yahweh, that he would remove. Uh, the verb here is sur, which means to turn aside in the call. This is a hithphil short form, so cause to turn aside or remove. And this is the short form which indicates that this is adjustive, a short form that there's no yod here in between the samic and the resh. So again, this special short form indicating this is adjustive, that he might remove, or that he would remove, now literally next, from on us. We'll simply say from us, and now F marking the definite direct object, the serpent, the nachash. Uh, that could be translated simply as the serpent, or this could be regarded as a collective, in other words, singular in form, but plural in meaning, the serpents. And now the same verb, palal, again a hithpal, this time it's an imperfect while consecutive, subject Moshe. So Moses prayed ba'ad, on behalf of or for ha'am, the people. Next verse. Yahweh said, Wayomer Yahweh, Yahweh said to Moses, Ase, imperative form, the verb Asa, make for yourself, Laka, for yourself, Saraf, a fiery one. So we have this word again, Saraf, a fiery one. That's a reference to uh, the serpents, the fiery serpents. Wasim, another imperative, the verb seem object otho, object pronoun, and place it, all nace, on a pole, 
Wahaya, and it will be anyone call uh, would mean all or anyone who is bitten. So the verb nashak, which we've had before, this time it is a call passive participle. Anyone who is bitten will see it. So the verb ra'ah, taking that as a wow consecutive, will see otho it and he will live. So that's the verb chaya. And this is again a call perfect. It's a wow consecutive. This is a special pausal form from the verb chaya. And he will live. Can you please raise the screen? All right. Moses made a serpent of bronze. So the verb asa, and this is uh, the shortened form that goes with the wow consecutive. Moses made a serpent, nachash nechosheth. That would be bronze, a serpent of bronze, a bronze serpent. And now again, the verb seem. And he placed it on the pole, hanes, wahaya, and it was if the serpent, hanachash, and then the verb again, nashak, bit. And now this is an oddity here. Uh, as the text stands, it would be a man. Simply ish by itself would be a man, but it's marked by, it's preceded by, eth, which is the marker of the definite direct object. However, ish, as it stands, is not definite. So a bit of an oddity here. Look at the apparatus of BHS, and you'll see manuscript evidence for supplying the definite article here before ish. Uh, bit the man. And that would make sense then why there would be then this marker for the definite direct object before, uh, because then it would be ha ish, uh, a noun which would be definite. The he of the definite article could have dropped out following the tau here of eth. Uh, at certain points in the history of the Hebrew script, those were very similar in appearance. Now, another thought is this. Sometimes Hebrew has the definite article for vividness, but translating it into English, we don't always bring out the definite article. So here is another possible translation. And it would be if a serpent bit a man, he would look, so the verb navat, uh, this is a hifil, perfect, third masculine singular, while consecutive, he would look l2, and now nechash, nechosheth, the bronze serpent, wachai, the same form that we had at the end of the preceding verse, now this time with the nuance, and he would live. So once again, and it would be if a serpent bit a man, he would look to the bronze serpent and he would live. All right, thus far the translation. And now some thoughts by way of interpretation very quickly. Of course, John chapter 3 verses 14 through 15 make it very clear that Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness was a type, a foreshadowing of Christ being lifted up on the cross. And with regard to a type then, we look for points of similarity between the type the Old Testament reality and the anti-type, the New Testament reality, the type points forward to, foreshadows the anti-type. So what are some points of similarity that can be brought out between both actions, both events? Moses lifting up the serpent in the wilderness and Christ being lifted up on the cross. Here are nine points of similarity. We can make this point first of all. God delivered the Israelites because he was a God of grace and mercy and love, not because the Israelites deserved deliverance. And the same thing can be said with regard to our salvation. Jesus saved us, but not because we deserved it. Also, the deliverance in the wilderness was from God. 
It was altogether his doing according to the way that he chose. It was by his almighty power alone. This was completely outside of the Israelites. And so with regard to our salvation, this is entirely from God. It's altogether his doing according to the way he chooses by his almighty power. And we contribute absolutely nothing. Third point. A person who was bitten had to look at the bronze serpent if he was to survive. No one else could look for him. And so, a person has to believe in Jesus, look to Christ in faith in order to be saved. No one else can believe for that person. Fourth point, there was only one remedy for the crisis in the wilderness, and that was God's remedy, God's way of deliverance. There was no other way. And so, of course, there is only one way for us to be saved, and there is no other way. Christ is the only way of salvation. Fifth point, God's way of rescue was entirely sufficient. The Israelites didn't have to add anything to God's plan. They simply looked and lived. And so for us, God's way of saving us, his plan, his method is entirely sufficient and nothing else has to be added to it. Sixth point, all who looked at the bronze serpent lived. So there was no distinction concerning age, sex, or position in society. No matter how many times a person had been bitten, no matter how much poison was in the person, no matter if he had just been bitten or some time had passed and he was about to die, if the person looked, the person lived. And so now with regard to us, whoever believes in Jesus has salvation. There's no distinction, of course, with regard to age, sex, position in society. No matter how many sins a person has committed, that person still has forgiveness. No matter if that person has been a believer all his life or just brought to faith on his deadbed, if that person has faith in Christ, that person will be saved. Seventh point, God used a means external to the people for saving them. And so God uses a means external to us for our salvation. Christ on the cross and the open tomb. Number eight, people looked at something repulsive there in the wilderness. There was a serpent, a bronze serpent, and that would have been repulsive because this was a poisonous, deadly snake. We, in faith, look at something repulsive, so to speak, Christ on the cross. And here you can think of the description of the suffering servant in the fourth servant song in Isaiah, Isaiah 52, 13 to 53, 12. And then finally, the ninth point, God's promises are sure. His word is certain and true. God said the people would look at the serpent, they would live. And that is exactly what happened. Just follow the word of God. So for us, God's promises are sure. Just follow the word of God. God says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that is exactly what happens. This is a fun text to work with. May God bless your meditation on this text. More points could be listed, but this will have to suffice. God's blessings with regard to your teaching and preaching this text. The Lord be with you.